Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Profile Manager by taking a look at devices and device groups. Now, in a previous screencast in, us, in this series that I've done on Profile Manager, I've showed you how to enroll your devices in Profile Manager, how to set up the service. I've also walked you through an overview of the interface as well as how to configure users and groups using Profile Manager. So if you haven't seen those previous screencasts in the series, I'd recommend you go back and take a look at those because they build on one another to get us to the point we are here. So what we're going to do this time is talk about our uh, devices and device groups. Now, as you can see in a previous screencast, I enrolled my MacBook Pro and an iPad. And so I've gone through and kind of shown what each of these areas are here uh, for each of these devices. I also have these device groups right here. And so I can add device groups. And so what I've done here is I've added an iOS group and a Mac group. And so all I need to do then is uh, you've got here members. If I want to, I can add a device. So I'm going to add a device to the iOS group. Here's my iPad. So I'm going to put that in there and say done. And you can see that it's done. And there's my iPad in there. And let's go ahead and save that change. And let's do the same thing for the Mac here. Let's go ahead and add a device. And we're going to add my MacBook Pro to this one and say done. And there's my MacBook Pro. We're going to save it. So now I've got these devices and device groups set up. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to manage uh, these devices. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to go into settings over here. And we're going to go right into the settings for this particular group. Now the settings, this is a profile that gets pushed to the devices that are in this group. Now what I would say is uh, one of the great ways to manage your devices is to do them by these device groups. If you've got a lot of iOS devices and you want them to be the same in terms of settings, add them to a group so that you just make the change once and then all the changes are pushed to all of the devices that you've got instead of having to go in one by one and make these changes. So that's just a recommendation. So let's go ahead and edit this profile because I want to show you the different things you can do with your devices. Now, in a previous screencast, I showed you, uh, I walked through each and every one of these services and showed you the different things that you could change. So I'm not going to go through every single one this time. Uh, if you want to see every single one of these, you can see it in my users and groups screencast, which goes over those in detail. Uh, but if you look here on the side, we got organization. This is an OS 10 and iOS, so any changes in here will affect all devices. Uh, this is only for iOS devices, and uh, these down here are for Mac uh, devices here. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of the things that are different. If I just uh, scroll down here, uh, you'll notice all the different things I can do for iOS devices. I can set up my restrictions, and I can do content filtering, which is a new thing. Uh, to do content filtering. Let me just hit that for a minute. Uh, I talked about this before, but I can filter by uh, different types of content here. I can even use a plugin if I've got one. And I can say what are permitted URLs and what are blacklisted. So that's a nice thing to be able to do if you want to monitor what people are using their devices for. If you come down here, I've also got the um, ability to set up uh, in, whoops, let's just scroll up here. I've got the ability to set up Google accounts as well, so I can add my Gmail account. That's a new service that's been added here to, uh, to the OS X uh, server in our profile manager. Uh, I can also do some work with cellular. Let me just click on that for a minute. And this is, uh, if I have APNs for cellular, I can set those up and set up the authentication types and all of that. I've also got, if I just go down here, I've got OS X server accounts. I've also got the lock screen, and this is nice. If I just say configure, I can set a message that says, if lost, return to, and put that information in there. And what will happen is, is when I set the device to being lost, uh, then what will happen in lost mode is that message will show up. So that that way it'll be on the login window so that if you ever lose your phone, someone can go and return the uh, message to you. So it's really nice that I can do that. I think, it'll, I, think I can put it on there for the whole time, uh, but especially in lost mode, they'll have a way to get back to me. All right, so that's, that's kind of the only difference there in the iOS apps compared to what we talked about before. Uh, again, you can do this uh, home screen layout where you set up the dock and you can set up how you want your apps to show on each page so that you can actually do your configuration of your iOS device here and then push it to all your devices if you want them to be the same. So that is a nice option. All right, let's take a look at the OS X uh, deals here. This is for a Mac. Uh, these are all the things I covered in the previous screencast. Uh, again, I can set up the login window here. If I just say configure, I can set up how I want this to look. I can show additional uh, information in the menu bar if I want to. I can put a banner 
up here with uh, you know some words across it. I can even set how I want the login prompt to look, right? Show local users, mobile users. And what I can do here, I've had people ask me this question of how can I show the actual network users on the login screen? Because when you use a regular Mac without these different changes, it ends up just showing an other field that you click on and then you have to put in your username and password so you have to know what that is for some people they want to have it where you can actually see the account if that's the case you just click this box that says show network users and it will have those users show up on there so that's just a little tip to make that work uh, again if I come into options I have the option to do a bunch of different things I can show the password hint if I want to or not. I can disable automatic login. I've got all of these different settings that I can normally do in system preferences. I can just set here and have that push to all of my Macs. In terms of access, I can, I can say allow these users to log in or deny these users. So if I've got a particular Mac that I only want certain people to log into, I can deny users so that they can't get into it and then only allow specific ones. Uh, and then, of course, I can set these other things up with local users and work group settings and all of that. And then I've got scripts. And if I wanted to run some scripts, uh, I can put scripts in here to have them run uh, on my machine when people log in or when they log out. So it does give me a lot of different um, flexibility here in how to set up my Mac. And again, nice thing is make the change. When they log in, it pushes it to those devices, and then it's in effect. Uh, I've also got some things here with uh, uh, login items. We've talked about that. Uh, mobility, I'm going to do a screencast on that uh, with a little more detail on how to use mobile accounts. Here we've got the software update. And so this is a great place where you can configure your software update server. Uh, people, instead of using the terminal, if you want to set it up in here to say, hey, I want you to look to my server to do software updates instead of Apple site, you can put the URL in here, and they give you the example of what to put in here. You just put your server's name in there with the colon, the 8088, and then this in index.su uh, catalog right here. You just put that right in there, and then it'll push it to the Mac, and the Mac will start looking at your server for updates instead of itself. Uh, you've got energy saver preferences in here, so you can do all of the energy saver settings uh, here on your desktop, on your portable, so that's like a laptop or something like that, and then you can schedule uh, information too on when the computer wakes up and when it sleeps. Again, set all this here instead of having to go into system preferences and make those changes. Uh, I covered family controls before. Here you have time machine, and so again, you can configure a time machine for where to look for your time machine server, and so again, you put in your uh, server's address here for the backup server and you can choose to backup all volumes system files and folders or not enable automatic backup uh, backups enable local snapshots the backup size capacity and maybe even paths to skip maybe there's some things you don't want backed up just because they're not important and you don't want them taking up drive space you can put that information in here so again a, a nice way to you know a little bit more fine tuning your time machine updates you can do that right in here and then, of course, we've got uh, XSAN. If, if those of you have an XSAN server, uh, you know, an XSAN setup, you can come in here and set that up through here. Again, most of you won't have that, but if you do, there's an option to, to set it up there. Uh, and then, again, we've got the proxies and custom settings, and I covered those in the, in the users and group screencast. So that gives you an idea of all the different settings here that you can do for your devices and device groups. Let me just go ahead and cancel this because I'm not going to keep these settings. Like I said, it's a good way to manage your devices by doing them by groups and then making these changes and having them push to all of your machines and, uh, and have those uh, show up. If you want to test to see if they got pushed, you come in here to the Activity tab and it will show the last update that took place. Or you can look at it down here for active or completed, completed tasks. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.